I wanted to do a video today about uh, missing your narcissist because um, I get a lot of questions about this on Quora. <clears throat> a lot of people ask me uh, about how does the narcissist feel that they've left and how do they feel and they think about the narcissist all the time and how can they go back and uh, men, you know, uh, bridges with the narcissist. Let me just tell you something. Uh, we have a saying, well, there's a saying in my country, which I'm sure a lot of places in the world say, never be like a dog that returns to your vomit. Okay. It's a biblical term that means never go back. Don't be, um, like Lot's wife that turns back and turns to a pillar of salt. As for how do we interpret that in daily life? Like, let's say for example, myself, um, I should not have gone back to my mother. I had known what was going on. I went into the back, you know, to the relationship because it's what narcissists do. It's called hoovering, which means that they are so afraid of losing their supply. They're losing this person who gives them this attention, whether it's in uh, angry attention, whether it's in uh, friendly attention, whatever it is that the narcissist gets from you, they need to have that back. So, you know, you, you, you're always puzzled as to why they would want you back because some of the things that narcissists do is they continue, the, you know, they continue doing the same things that they did before. Only this time that they've sucked you back in is worse because they're telling themselves that you can't do any better than them anyway. So you, they, you're just going to have to take anything that they want to dish out. And you know, that's your problem. So you have to be cognizant of why, you know, a narcissist wants you back that's number one and number two is people believe that to be used means that oh they're using me for sex or they're using me for money uh, malignant narcissists have many ways of using people and it's even just in the, the very presence uh, or even creating arguments that go nowhere it's the same argument over and over and over and over and over again, you know, you tell them not to do something and they continue to do this one thing that annoys you and upsets you. And they do it over and over and over and over again. And the reason why they do that is because they have captured a, a, per, a, a, a certain amount of your attention and that's what they thrive on. That's what they need. Um, and so we, you know, that's the narcissist. They need the arguments. They need uh, the control. They need the domination. They need someone at all times that uh, upon which they can climb their climb on top of and shit all over. To be honest with you, but let's not talk about them. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about you and missing that relationship. Um, we're all human beings. We all have needs we all have desires and <clears throat> unfortunately when you're in a relationship with anyone whether it's abusive or positive whether it's loving whatever that relationship is your pattern of thinking and behavior becomes accustomed to a certain groove a certain level of behavior you have a certain level of expectations you have a certain level of everything and when you're with an intimate partner one of the things that you um you people overlook and i don't see a lot of people talking about this is is um you know that intimacy that cuddling you know even though they're 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 mean and they're evil you still try to you know be affectionate and you miss that you miss that cuddling the warmth the love the kiss the holding and you are going to miss it you're not a robot you know i missed it and i'm with my intimate partner and i do miss my mother being i'm a human being i'm not a robot of course you're going to miss those things but at the same time you have to consider yourself first and one of the things i talk about <clears throat> in um <clears throat> sorry the narcissist decipher is sex it's one of the things that we don't really cover and a lot of therapists don't cover it in mainstream and a lot of people direct you to oh there must be something wrong with you um why you keep allowing yourself back into this situation there must be something wrong with you 
I'm going to tell you this, that if you are in a relationship with someone for five, three, maybe even 10 years, and you're accustomed, your body is accustomed to being touched, kissed, caressed, um, and you know, you're accustomed to having sex regularly, even though that relationship wasn't good for you, your body is still in that groove, in that thought pattern of, I want to be hugged, I want to be touched, I want to be kissed, and you can go on like that, and you still, you will turn back to the narcissist because, or the abuser, because you are accustomed to that. And it's all, it's quite dangerous because in addition to the warmth and the cuddling and the loving, you are also accustomed to the arguing. You're also accustomed to your tension level being up here. You're accustomed to being on your guard all the time. And that is not healthy for you. And when it comes to sex is while you're with a narcissist, you are having sex with a person who causes you the most tension. You are releasing your tension with the person who causes you tension. And so you are almost in a knot, in a cyclical knot. You go in and you come out a knot. And you're still trying to figure out how you get out of it, but at the same time, you have the, you know, the, the, the pleasure. And your body gets into that groove of, okay, I'm accustomed to sex. So when you get out of that situation and you call this person or you think about the person, just bear in mind, you're not, um, you're, you're, you're not necessarily weak and you're not stupid and you're not needy and you're not a wimp and you're not jello, you're, you're not putty in his hands. You are none of those things. If you do manage to leave a person who has abused you psychologically, physically, emotionally, financially, in any way, you are a survivor you a strong person you have a great heart you can do just about anything so what i want you to understand is um when you have those feelings they are natural they are natural you're a natural human being accept that this is what you're feeling you know when you say oh i miss you know you may be watching a movie and you know you see a couple kissing and holding and you go oh i miss josh and you pick up your phone and you look at all the pictures that you two had and then you send him a text and say hey what are you doing i mean remember that you've just seen an image of someone holding touching and caressing you have not um you you your your brain doesn't separate the two your brain identifies you in the person of the of the role of being kissed on the television so you long for that and you miss that and you want that and that's fine but you have to accept it as a part of your healing process that this was natural for you for three five and ten years what is unnatural for you is no nothing at all you ain't getting nothing. Nobody giving you nothing. And you ain't giving nobody nothing. And that's fine. That's fine. You don't need someone all the time. You need time for yourself. You need time to focus on your healing and focus on your yourself and figure out what do you want to do next. And I can guarantee you that um, even if you look like Quasimodo with a humpback and buck tooth and cross eyed, somebody gonna want you. That's just the reality of life. Someone is going to want you. And you cannot dismiss, oh, I don't want a relationship. I don't want nobody. I ain't even think about nobody. It can happen where you just go at a stretch of a time and completely forget that you are a person who have needs and wants. If you, if you put yourself in that box, do you understand what I mean? Like, okay, um, I used to have sex. I don't anymore. Oh, I'm fine. I can survive like that. And then you go to the supermarket and you meet some guy. You don't even know what to do with yourself. You don't even know how to react to that. You don't know what this person could possibly want from you because you haven't dealt with it. And 
the likelihood is that you have refrained from sex, you've refrained from um, intimacy because of the, the abuse, and then you end up just trying to feed your own need. And guess what? You might end up back with an abuser. And because you haven't spent the time with yourself to analyze yourself, to think about, okay, this is natural, this is what's happening to me, and this is how I'm gonna cope with it. So you have to look at those things as a natural part of your healing process. Yes, when you leave a narcissist, you will miss them. Yes, you will want to have intimacy and sex. Yes, you will have those needs and feelings that come up and you're going to need to know how to deal with them. And one of the things that I talk about was don't be afraid to learn the art of, you know, self-pleasure. Don't be afraid of buying toys. Don't be afraid of, you know, looking at porn once in a while to help yourself along. And I'm being very, you know, direct. A lot of people are going to laugh at this video. A lot of people are going to think it's funny, but those who have gone through these things understand exactly what I'm saying. If you haven't gone through it, this is not for you. You will, it's, it will be way over your head. If you haven't experienced intimate, intimate partner violence, you, it will be completely over your head. However, for those of you who have this experience and some of you are living with that person maybe you're living in separate rooms or maybe you have some kind of co-parenting relationship and your body still longs for that person don't be afraid of exploring your own body and getting yourself to a point where you're calm getting yourself to a point where you don't have the a bee in your head going sex 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 i want sex 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 you need peace so find a way to make that happen for you okay don't worry about nobody else because guess what if you can master that you can also get your thoughts in line and you're not just acting out of a purely animalistic approach to saying okay i have an urge and a need to fix because you're gonna do what? You're gonna call your narcissist or call your abuser or you're gonna go out there and find someone to fix your business. So I'm telling you straight up, learn to fix your business yourself and then you can go through the process, think things through, understand exactly what you're going through, feel things through. And I want you to, I, I don't want you to do what I did. Don't put yourself in a box where you never have sex again. Don't do that. That's not good for you. There is nothing good about that because on the day when somebody comes and says, you're hot, I want you. What do you do? What do you do? You don't have your defense system. So you need to figure out, okay, this is what's happening. This is natural. This is how I'm going to deal with it. And when someone else comes along, I have my boundaries, I have my barriers, I'm in control of my body, I don't have to give it to the first person who knocks and thinks I'm hot, or the first person who tells me that they love me because they should love me. I'm great, I'm good, I'm wonderful, you're supposed to love me, you're not supposed to not love me, so come with something else. You see what I'm saying? You have more value to yourself and you're not just attaching you know, any kind of emotional um, strings to, you know, your, your just, just your own animalistic desire. So I don't know who that's for. Um, however, if it's for you, um, thank you so much for watching. And, um, you know, don't get sucked in. Don't get caught. Don't call back your narcissist. And if you do feel, you know, these needs, learn a way to, uh, to handle them yourself. Don't go back. Your life is better without abuse. It's more full. It's more happier. You see the world in a different place. People out there love you. They want to be around you. And, um, you know, just believe the words that are coming out of my mouth that you're so much better off. You don't have to turn back to 
abuse, to feel like a person, to feel desirable, to feel wanted. Other people are going to want you. You're good. You're wonderful. You're a creation of God. I mean, no matter how old you are or what your body looks like, someone out there wants you. And I need you to value that. I need you to learn to love that and appreciate it. And when those feelings and those urges come up, you need to learn how to deal with them on your own and meet people on your terms, relationships on your terms. Do you understand? I hope you do. Thanks so much for watching.